Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this is another video in a series related to the idea of trigonometric substitutions. We're gonna do one more example to show how you can make deliberate, intentional moves to take an integral with not the structure that we like and kind of convert it into some structure that's really nice. In this case, we have kind of a mess. We don't have a, an anti-chain rule kind of a thing because the derivative of a, this quadratic would be a linear, which is not there. And so we just need another technique. And the technique in this case is the trigonometric substitution of tangent of theta. Why? One plus tangent squared is secant squared. Can you imagine if this denominator said one plus tangent squared, we would be in good shape. Now at this stage, it's not close to saying that. So we have some work to do to get it to say that. The first thing is we want it to say one plus. And so let's make a move. Let's factor out the 15. If we factor out the 15, we'll be left with one plus. Oh, 15 times what would give you four X squared? Well, four fifteenths X squared. So I hope you see that in factoring out the 15, 15 times one is 15, and 15 times four fifteenths is just the four x squared. Now that one fifteenth is just a coefficient or a multiplier, a factor that we can pull out in front of the integral. So we're getting closer to our goal of having one plus tangent squared. Now let's work on this term here. Can you imagine if this term was one plus one quantity squared, ultimately one plus tangent squared, but what would that one quantity squared need to be to produce four fifteenths x squared? First of all, let's do the easy one. I hope you see the x. x squared, x squared, yes, great. Now what about the coefficient? We want to square and get four fifteenths. Well, the numerator of two. 2 squared would give me the numerator of 4. Denominator. What denominator squared would give me a 15? The square root of 15. So the coefficient there would be 2 over the square root of 15. I hope you can see it. 2 over the square root of 15 squared would be 4 fifteenths. X squared, X squared. Yeah, great. So we're going to make a deliberate intentional move here. And a deliberate intentional move is this. We're going to let... 2 over the square root of 15 x be the tangent of theta. Now we just make that move and then we deal with the consequences. If I make this move, then this quantity will become tangent of theta squared and one plus tangent of theta squared is secant squared and things will work out really nice. But we do have some consequences and the consequences are this, we need a dx. So given that this is our new statement, our new um, identity, we're now going to have to figure out what dx is. So let's first say x is equal to, if we multiply both sides by the square root of 15 over 2, x will equal that. If we take the derivative with respect to theta, now the derivative of tangent. You may have to remember this, dust off some old Calc 1 memories, but the derivative of tangent is secant squared of theta. And then just one more move, let's multiply the d theta over. So we'll make a final claim that that dx is gonna be the same as the square root of 15 over two, make that five there, secant squared of theta d theta. So with those two deliberate moves, we're now gonna be able to transform this integral, this integral into something more helpful. Here's how it's gonna be. Remember our 1 15th? That's still there. Our integral now is gonna become one over one plus. Now, this two over the square root of 15 times x is what we're allowing to be equal to tangent of theta. So instead, we're gonna have tangent of theta squared. And then that dx, because of the consequences, that dx is the square root of 15 over 2 times the secant square root of theta, d theta. 
Now at this moment, and even now you've seen this, hopefully you've seen the previous videos and you know that even though it looks messy now, it's gonna get unmessy here in a hurry. First, another factor here, a multiplier of the square root of 15 over two we can bring out front. And we have this integral, we'll have one over one plus tangent squared of theta. We'll have secant squared theta d theta. Now, one plus tangent squared is the same as secant squared. Thank you, Pythagorean identities. So secant squared in the denominator multiplied by secant squared here. We know that's gonna simplify. And if we kind of simplify this a little bit, square root of 15 over 30 times the integral of just one d theta. And there it is again, that one d theta. What is the integral of one d theta? Just theta. Don't forget your plus c. But again, we don't leave our answers in terms of theta. We wanna transform them to be back in terms of x. So we come back to our claim. Our claim here was this, uh, two over the square root of 15 times x was equal to the tangent of theta. Therefore, theta is the inverse tangent of two over the square root of 15 times x. Or if you prefer, the arctangent of two over the square root of 15 times x. So let's make that last move and then we will have it. The last move is this, sorry. Square root of 15 over two. It's multiplied by theta arctangent or inverse tangent. I'll use the inverse notation this time. The inverse tangent of two over the square root of 15 times x. Don't forget your plus c. Now, with all of this work, it's beautiful, but it might feel a little bit like, oh, how does that really work? Did we really get the right answer? Let's go over to Wolfram Alpha and check it. So after all that work at the whiteboard, let's just confirm our work using Wolfram Alpha. I've typed in just integral of, and Wolfram Alpha accepts the kind of abbreviated and uh, abbreviated problem here, just one over 15 plus four x squared. And when we check that, first of all, check to see that it inputted what we wanted, and certainly it did. And then let's see if it outputted what we wanted. The inverse tangent, there it is. Um, now. Wolfram Alpha left the radical square root of 15 in the denominator. Our result has the square root of 15 in the numerator, so we would have to do some rationalization to see that this is indeed equivalent. But it is. This is equivalent to what we got on the whiteboard. So we've seen on Wolfram Alpha that our answer is correct, and that does help us to uh, uh, feel good about the work that we've done here on the board. So thanks for joining us. Click on the next video if you want to learn more, and also click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to this channel. See you soon.